But you actually got clickbaited, you absolute fool. I'll be using the minimum amount of plants required to be every level, and in 1-1, one -one, you can beat the level with a single pea shooter in the back. Now, if only the progress bar, you know, uh, progressed after placing a single pea shooter. In this stage specifically, zombies don't spawn until you place two. I wait until having a thousand fifty sun before finally placing the second one. I think this works differently on other platforms as I'm playing on the PC version, but as it stands, 1-1 one -one requires two plants. This gives us a sunflower seed, which won't be helpful for a while since it takes up one of our minimum plant slots and can't be shoveled yet, which hurts more now that there are three lanes. Fortunately, sunflowers are very much optional in this game, so ignoring them is better than hoping a zombie spawns in a lane to eat it early. You might think that this level would be RNG reliant to get zombies not to spawn in lanes that already lost their lawnmower, but there's a pretty well known mechanic where zombies stop spawning in lanes that recently lost the lawnmower. It's roughly until the next flag, but not quite if you lose it early. 1-2 leaves the first lane to lose its lawnmower vulnerable to zombie spawning, so just defend that lane with one pea shooter at a time, while being ready to instantly replace an eaten one with a new one, and you should be good to go. With cherry bombs now in our possession, 1-3 is an easier version of 1-2, even with the more durable conehead zombies, since the plant is an instant use explosion that disappears without the need for a shovel, so I recommend saving all sun for these and you might have to slow the faster flag zombie down by killing him for the cherry bomb cooldown to recharge in time if a conehead spawns on the same lane as him. 1-4 is the first level to use all 5 lanes and offer the walnut. This isn't going to be the most useful plant in our arsenal, but it can slow a zombie down enough to group him with another one for a higher value cherry bomb. Even without the shovel, the timing of this combo is pretty easy on this level. It can also be used to stall a lane in order for more zombies to spawn in it, so the lawnmower clears more of them as well. If you need to line up a cherry bomb with zombies that are closer together, sunflowers can do that thanks to their lower health, and can even drop 25 sun to mitigate the cost of it. On my winning run, zombies spawned in one lane without a lawnmower since it was lost early, and I was able to stall them with a walnut and cherry bomb them. I had poor bomb placement since I thought the range was bigger, but another two walnuts were able to stall the last zombie long enough for yet another one. 1-5 one is a conveyor belt level that is also a minigame. Conveyor belt levels mean that we don't have to pay for plants with sun and instead have to wait for them to come to us, but once they're on screen, we can plant them for free. For walnut bowling, I just wait until one was off screen before releasing the next one. It's still really easy. And once that's beaten, we get the best plant for this challenge by far, potato mine. These have to be planted, and after enough time passes, they arm themselves and explode as soon as the zombie walks on that tile. The downside is how long they take to arm, which is roughly four tiles ahead of a zombie, but zombies have varying walk speeds, so a slow one can force you to wait too long before planting something else if you're not careful. The other downside is how long their cooldown is, which can be mostly mitigated by placing it further back at the start of the level, since clearing the screen of zombies immediately summons the next wave. Beating 1-4 also gave us one of the most important tools for this challenge, the shovel, which can dig up plants to allow me to move them without having to get a zombie to eat them first. This makes pea shooters good enough for clearing basic zombies in 10 hits, which is roughly 3 tiles of movement. Using potato mines, digging up pea shooters, and placing cherry bombs when necessary makes 1-6 so easy that I still have all lawnmowers by the time the huge wave approaches. 1-7 is pretty much the opposite of that. The main problem is that it has two flags, and I usually sacrifice my lawnmower to clear a flag. I tried this level with two plants, and I think it's possible with two, but would require insane RNG with zombies spawning in the right lanes consistently, and spawning in groups where cherry bombs can clear them, 
especially the pole vaulting zombies who are a much bigger problem than before since they require immediate focus due to their high speed and they don't die to a single pea shooter. I'm not going to bore you with too many details, I'd rather bore you with just enough, so here's what I do on my winning attempt. I start the level by planting two sunflowers and use potato mines to clear the early zombies. When two zombies spawn at once, I place a pea shooter to clear one and dig it up to place another mine which is more cost efficient than a cherry bomb, and both are less important cooldowns since right after the mine kills a zombie, a pole vaulter spawns who I'm forced to cherry bomb. Another one immediately spawns, so I place a sunflower to slow it down and then potato mine. I do the same combo again and use the pea shooter to clear regular zombie with another one luckily spawning behind it. Now that there are more zombies on screen, I have to get rid of one of my sunflowers and after another mine, I place a snow pea as a unit I'm going to keep for most of the level as it can solo conehead and pole vaulters since it slows them down. For the first flag, you need your cherry bomb, so I use it here to get as much value as I can. Unfortunately, a conehead spawns behind a regular, so I'm forced to snow pee in the top lane too. I keep up the same strategies and hope that enough zombies spawn in the top two lanes, since those lanes don't require focus. I'm forced to give up some lawnmowers, and the pole vaulter was behind another zombie long enough where it was able to jump over the snow pee. I stall a lane with a walnut for more lawnmower value before being forced to defend an open lane until finally getting to the final wave with a single mower remaining. This is a good time to mention something that this game has in common with Cuphead, and that is pausing the game is completely broken. It allows me to plan my moves to exactly match the situation. You can even move the pause menu around. Here. I have enough time to realize that I can't cherry bomb the bottom two lanes that are open due to the cost, and instead use another pea shooter. Wait, that's another thing the game has in common with Cuphead. And focus on protecting top lane since the other lane has a lawnmower. Once the bottom lane is dealt with, I can place a walnut on top to stall even more. I mine one of the remaining zombies and stall long enough for another walnut, which narrowly wins the level. 1-8 is an easy one plant victory as it only has one flag. The level mostly summons a single cone head or bucket head at a time who both die to instas like potato mine or cherry bomb. The way the game seems to work is a lot of the time if a cup head... Okay, I've, pl I've been playing too much Cuphead. I As I was saying, the way the game seems to work a lot of the time is if a cone head is summoned, it replaces the game summoning a regular zombie and what's important about that is if it were a regular zombie, two of them would spawn instead of one, so it's actually better for us to have one cone head or bucket head instead of two regular zombies. 1-9 is another two flag level, but this time there are more cone heads and bucket heads, plus pull vaulters, and I have repeater who can solo lanes much better than snow pea, so it's actually a two plant level. You still need to play well and use the strategies from before, and walnut stall is much more common here due to less speedy zombies to worry about. Just make sure you have your cherry bomb ready for when the final wave approaches. 110 is a conveyor belt level that spams zombies at you, but it can actually be beaten with one plant. It mostly comes down to getting enough cherry bombs and stalling until you get them, so with a little luck, it's pretty easy. With 2-1, we're now entering night levels, which means sun doesn't fall, which is really bad for us, but fortunately we're given the most broken plant in the game, Puff Shroom. This costs 0 and does the same damage as a pea shooter, so it can actually solo a regular zombie very easily. The only downside is that its range is about 2.5 tiles in front of it, but that's not too bad, especially since that's just over enough range needed to solo a regular zombie. This level also introduces the newspaper zombie, who needs three puff rooms to beat if you're only placing one at a time. Due to the focus the zombie requires to kill, I would be giving up lawnmowers since more zombies were on screen. This lost me my first attempt, since the graves on the lawn spawn a zombie each, so they overwhelm my lanes without lawnmowers. Just focus on keeping lawnmowers in lanes with the most graves, and this level is an easy one plant victory. 2-2 has two flags, so we're going to need three plants for it. 
We'll start with one sunflower since it's better than sun shrooms as those are only good if you plant two right away. The other two spots in the garden go to puff shrooms at first as they can stall the high number of zombies that spawn right away and can deal with cone heads as long as two focus it at the same time. It's still going to take three total, but it's better than a potato mine if there aren't a lot of zombies on screen. Technically, replacing one puff shroom over and over can solo a conehead zombie by itself, but that takes too long to be a viable option most of the time. We need the sunflowers so we can cherry bomb the flags, and just keep up the same strategies as usual while only giving lanes without graves, and you should have just enough sun when the second flag comes for another cherry bomb. Puffshroom should be able to clean up whoever's left. 2-3 introduces a screen door zombie and only has one flag. One plant is doable here, you just have to hope that any non-regular zombie in the final wave spawns in a lane with its lawnmower still there, as you'll have to give at least a couple. When I originally did this challenge, I had to settle with four plants on screen at a time in order to win, since there are three flags, a lot of strong zombies, and I needed two sunshrooms to give me enough sun. But I came back with a new strategy of using two sunflowers at the start, and puff shrooms and potato mines to get rid of a single enemy at a time until I am forced to shovel up one sunflower for more attack. I also got lucky with an excellent cherry bomb setup, which carried me to the end of the level, where I stall the bottom lawnmower with a walnut, and start fortifying the only lane I need to protect during the final wave. 2-5 is a whack-a-mole style minigame. Hammers are not plants. This is an easy, easier plant level. 2-6 is another one flag that introduces football zombies, who I introduced to potato mines for an easy one plant victory. 2-7 can be done with three plants if you utilize the newly acquired Hypno Shroom. It's only good on conehead zombies or football zombies, since the screen door zombie doesn't protect itself from melee attacks, but that's mostly a good thing for me, since I won't be hypnotizing it most of the time. The only weird thing with this is it's random if a zombie fighting for you wins against the same type of zombie, but puff shrooms can guarantee you the win. 2-8 introduces the dancing zombie, who if not played around properly gets rid of multiple lawnmowers, but this level only has one flag. For the first one that spawns at the same time before the flag, we have to place a potato mine before he summons backup dancers. This means we have to guess which of the five lanes he'll spawn in, but he only spawns in lanes that have enough room for all four backup dancers, and there's a grave in the way of the middle, so we only have two lanes that we can place it. Either way, it's a 33% chance of working. The flag is where it gets trickier. If we kill a backup dancer while the main dancer is still undead, after a short amount of time he'll spawn a new one in its place. So I have to stall other lanes with puff shrooms so the dancer dies before spawning more backup. But if I only do that, the other backup dancer will have too much health to kill before reaching the house, so I have to damage him 8-9 to nine times and shovel the puff shroom before killing it, and then stall the other lane. This way, the dancer dies, another lane loses its lawnmower, and I can finish the last backup dancer all with one plant at a time. Even with the newly acquired Doom Shroom, 2-9 spams a lot of zombies, much of them being stronger variants, so we don't have enough sun without planting two sun producers and using at least one attacking plant at a time. The instant plants we have should be enough to make the level go pretty smoothly as long as you focus zombies in the proper order. 2-10 is another conveyor belt level with more than enough ice shrooms and doom shrooms to beat it with one plant at a time. Boy, I sure hope this trend keeps up in 3-10. 3-1 is the first daytime pool level. Lily pads will count towards my plant total, but with one flag and cherry bombs being able to hit zombies in the pool, one plant is possible even though a lawnmower in the pool can only kill zombies on the tile in front of it. I'm sure this won't become a problem later though, haha. <laughs> 2 has two flags and takes three plants. For two of them I use sunflowers and the last potato mines at first, and as the level progresses I use the new insta squash, which is a slightly more expensive potato mine, 
that it doesn't need to arm itself, so it's going to be used in every level from now on too. The weird thing about squash is that it doesn't hit an entire tile, so in order for one to hit two or more zombies, they have to be almost on top of each other. We can set this up with walnuts, but that's really expensive and prevents us from placing another plant, so I usually set this up with puff shrooms when I can. Using three plants means that I can place my instas on lily pads to clear the pool, which is the main reason I need three here. And after that, we finally get access to Peter. Peter is cool and shoots in three lanes, which usually isn't that good. Sorry, Peter. But here, it's amazing since it can defend the pool without a lily pad. The plan for 3-3 is to stall until we get 6 Peter on the map. This will allow us to stall until the final wave requires us to dig them up so I can lily pad walnut stall for squash to hit multiple zombies and then cherry bomb to clean up for a 2 plant victory. 3-4 took me a long time which is partially my fault for not getting the third extra seed slot before this level since we need each plant we have and a walnut would have saved some close attempts. The problem with this level is that there are so many strong zombies including in the pool. Thankfully, the newly unlocked Tangle Kelp helps a lot with that. We want Peter to help with three lanes again, but if a Conehead or Buckethead go in front of a regular zombie, it requires our focus since Peter can't even take out a Buckethead by himself, and a Conehead takes so long to kill that the zombie behind it will eat Peter. So it basically comes down to a lot of RNG in which lanes enemies spawn, and using our instas to kill as many zombies as possible. This is only amplified by us needing all the sun we can get in this level. Something I've been doing for a lot of levels is seeing how many conehead zombies show on screen before the level. Here we want less of them for Peter to be able to solo more zombies, but others we want more conehead zombies so a single mine takes them out. Just reset the level if you don't get the start that you want. On an attempt where RNG was kind enough to get to the final flag, it would always be an insanely precise puzzle that it would just barely mess up and cost me the attempt. Until one time where I had all four of my lawn lawnmowers, so I only needed to worry about the pool, Peter was in range to clear two regular zombies, I tangle kelp the one zombie in the other lane, and was able to squash the scuba diver. I slightly misplayed by not placing the squash to kill it earlier, so I had to buy time with puff shrooms and lily pads to stall. I tangle kelped one of the two remaining so the plants could survive longer and had just enough time and sun to place one last squash for the victory. That level took way too long, many many hours, but we're finally past it and get a great reward. The car keys to buy pool cleaners. 3-5 is another conveyor belt level with cherry bombs, so it's an easy one plant. Good thing all conveyor belt levels going forward are going to be easy. <laughs> now that we bought twin sunflower, planting one sunflower can give us enough sun where we don't need another one to take up one of our precious spaces. On 3-6 we can easily get by with three plants using one twin sunflower and spamming instants. At the end, I protect my lawnmowers for a little bit longer with Peter, and finish off the last lane with a jalapeno. 3-7 shows that even though Twin Sunflower produces a lot more sun, we still don't have enough for 3 flags to be done with 2 plants, so I use Twin Sunflower, Peter, and Instant Use plants to get through this level. 3-8 has 2 flags though, so it's back to 2 plants. 3-9 has three flags again. There are so many pole vaulters and dolphin riders, and I need to be able to puff stream a pole vaulter to slow it down. Same goes for the dolphin rider, who can be slowed down with a lily pad, or slowed down by dying. With three plants, this level is very doable. Now, I spent a lot of time on 310, and unfortunately, I think the best thing to do for this challenge is just to skip it. Let me explain, we get squash and jalapenos, these are both okay, but not good enough. A cherry bomb could clear 3 lanes, and at most these can clear 1, and that's if you get them. 
You usually don't, since this level loves to give you useless lily pads, torchwoods, spikeweeds, tall nuts, and peters that aren't good enough here. Before, the problem with Peter is that he couldn't clear a lane if any zombie other than a basic is in front, and this level not only spams you with zombies, it spams you with strong zombies. Even three plants on the field isn't enough to beat this level unless maybe you get insane RNG for the entirety of it. I think it's probably possible, but improbable, and just not fun. Even five plants isn't enough without insane RNG, so I think it makes the most sense to skip this level since it's just too luck dependent due to needing perfect seed and zombie RNG. 4-1 is the first nighttime fog level, which mostly blocks our view for the incoming zombies, although there are spots you can see them, so use that information to your advantage whenever you can. Since this is a one flag and we still have puff shrooms as well as the new sea shrooms who are also free though they have a longer cooldown, it's an easy one plant level. In 4-2 the fog is much more impactful as stronger zombies are spawning in, but the twin sunflower basically solves our sun problem during night levels and gives us enough to use doom shroom when necessary for an easy two plant clear. 4-3 introduces the Balloon Zombie, who we can't afford to clear with Cactuses. Cactus... Cactuses. is Cacti, right? Yeah, Cacti. With Cacti, so we have to hope it spawns in the lane with the Lawnmower. As long as it does, that's an easy one plant level. 4-4 four, four has Balloon Zombies and Dolphin Riders. Both of these zombies eat up our Lawnmowers, especially since more Balloon Zombies spawn this time and dolphin riders require immediate focus, which is made worse by the fog not letting us know which lane they're in right away. This was also the level I realized it was a mistake to use rakes, which I haven't been using often. You see, Plants vs Zombies has a mechanic where as soon as zombies on screen die, the next wave is immediately summoned. This isn't a big deal, but summoning waves faster means less time to farm sun. I've been using this to my advantage for most of the game, but for some reason I saw rakes as an upgrade rather than something actively hurting my chances of winning. But more about this specific level. Save a Doom Shroom for the first flag, which will clear all but one lane since it has a range of three around all sides, and clear the other lane with Puff Shrooms or Potato Mines depending on the situation. You'll probably need at least one Blover too if a Balloon Zombie is in a bad lane, and you can stall with an ice room for a two plant victory. The minigame of this world has you smashing pots that contain seeds or zombies. I won this with one plant on my first try pretty easily. Just use instants when you need them and other seeds to clear anything that isn't too threatening. 4-6 is an easy one flag one plant level since the new zombie introduced doesn't really threaten our playstyle at all. Also, look how slow he is. Me and my chat kind of felt bad for the guy, so we let him eat a couple of puff shrooms on his way out. 4-7 has two flags, so we'll need two plants, but nothing else special really happens here. I mean, we fed the digging zombie on his way out again, but uh, that's it. 4-8 is another pretty easy one flag, one plant level, as long as the pogo zombie doesn't spawn in a lane without a lawnmower during the final flag and I gave up the lane the first one spawned in so I could protect the pool with more Tangle Kelp since the lawnmower exploit seems to work a little less in the pool. I think that's because it only has two lanes, but I don't know. 4-9 is another simple two flags, two plants level. I tried Cattail since this is the last level it might do something, but it was much worse than Twin Sunflower plus Instance since it can only target the closest zombie, which wouldn't work with bucket heads or if two or more zombies were on screen. Too bad, it would have been amazing in World 3. 410 is unfortunately another conveyor belt level that I think is better to just skip, since this time our only instant use is Blover, and again we get a lot of useless plants on their own. So yeah, to World 5 then. 51 is the first roof level. I won't be counting the flower pots that start on the roof as planting since I didn't put them there, but like lily pads, if I plant them myself, it counts towards the total. 
And ooh, would you look at that, one flag. You'll never guess how many plants I use here. But in all seriousness, using instas is a lot tougher here than other levels since we can't place them on the right side of the screen, so it's a bit awkward but definitely doable here. 5-2 has two flags but it's just barely doable with one plant since flower pots have the upside of stalling zombies while they're eating them, though the downside is once they're gone I can't replace them. This required a lot of RNG with zombies spawning in specific lanes and one of the awkward parts about not instantly using instas is that zombie walk speed varies slightly which can make plants that would normally take out multiple zombies like a cherry bomb hitting three lanes of zombies only hit the two closest ones. 5-3 takes away a row of flower pots so although I think one plant is possible it would require insane RNG to actually happen so I feel okay saying that this is a two flags two plants level. 5-4 is the first level we can use the coffee bean. I don't count the coffee bean as planting myself since it doesn't take up a tile and even disappears if you shovel the plant you were using it on. I also just thought it'd be more fun to allow it, but I understand if you disagree with this rule. I tried 5-4 with two plants for a long time and again I think it's possible but not likely at all. There are three flags and the zombie speed is even more messed up since pogos and ladder zombies are so fast and Doomshroom can now be used on the right side of the screen which is much more effective since the entire range can be used and the flower pot being destroyed after the explosion isn't as big of a deal since it's replaceable. I start the level with two twin sunflowers and whatever instant yeast plant the situation calls for. I only dig one of the sunflowers up when I need the flower pot doomshroom combo and with that this level's still tough but not insanely RNG reliant. 5-5 is a conveyor belt level that's actually pretty easy with one plant. Just use Chomper to eat lanes with one zombie, and line up cherry bombs by stalling with pumpkins and your own flower pots. When the bungees go down to steal pots, just place a useless plant there to get stolen instead, and you should be able to save your lawnmowers until the end. 5-6 can be done with two plants by starting with the twin sunflower and instance again. Catapult zombies can be dealt with by using jalapenos, and once you don't need to farm sun anymore, just get rid of the sunflower for a flower pot doom shroom to protect the lawnmowers for the final wave. 5-7 has three flags, and in order to keep up on sun, I need two twin sunflowers at the start, so this is a three plant level. 5-8 has gargantuars, but I've been spamming instants for a while now, so that's not really an issue. It's simply a two flags, two plants level. 5-9 follows that same pattern we've been seeing for a while now, so it's a three flags, three plants level. Dr. Zomboss is another conveyor belt level, but his fight is very doable with one plant. Just use the same lawnmower exploit we've been using all game, and he can't summon zombies to lanes other than the one that we place things in. Just stalls waves with flower pots and the occasional ice shroom and jalapeno once he lowers the robot's head enough to take damage and clear the lane. Then ice shroom and place an attacking plant to deal more damage. Always make sure to save at least one ice shroom and jalapeno in case he sends the opposite elemental ball down the only lane you have. With these tricks you should be able to win. Okay, this time for sure. Okay, it's more optimal to place it in uh, back to the middle since it's more cinematic. Yes! And the final boss is finally beaten. Thanks for watching. You might have noticed that the end screen is a little different than usual, and that's because I now have channel memberships with the perk of the highest tier allowing those members to make an end screen. I have two this time to show, so thanks normal for the first one and max for the second.